Justin, are we ready to go? Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regularly scheduled Blue Lake City Council meeting of April 23rd, 2024. And I will call this meeting to order. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. And our first order of business after the flag salute is to establish a quorum of the council. Here. Present. Present. Here. Okay, we are here, four of us, with quorum. one. Yeah, we do have a quorum, though, so we are good there. She says she's sorry. Okay. She's really sick. Yeah, okay. Well, it's better that people stay away and keep us all safe, and I think we're more uh, aware of that now. All right, we are now on item three, public comment. The public is invited to present petitions, make announcements, or provide other information to the city council that is relevant to the scope of authority of the city of Blue Lake that is not on the agenda. The council may provide up to 15 minutes for this public input session. To assure that each individual presentation is heard, the council may uniformly impose time limitations of three minutes to each individual presentation. The public will be given the opportunity to address items that are on the agenda at the time the council takes up each specific agenda item. Is there anyone here for public comment? Uh, we'll do Tina, Catalina, and then Marty. Great. And it looks like we have two hands on Zoom as well. Well, this is good. I'm not to be a madly crowd here. Pull your mic. Yeah, pull your mic down and. Oh, yes, hello. And I'm here because of this town square not being here anymore. And uh, I was shocked. And I wrote a little poem about it. And I'd like to read the poem. It's called No More. What for? No more blossoming trees, no birds and no bees. No more big rocks and flowers with magical powers. No more shiny. Black benches, so graceful and strong. No more grass neath my feet on this earth to walk. No more. No more. With love. Thank you, Tina. Nicely done. And I was afraid this was going to happen, and maybe we needed to be a little more proactive about explaining that that situation at Town Square was really temporary, although beautiful and that the new uh, project is going to be even more beautiful, but it was only temporary. Okay, um, Marty, and then we do have two hands on Zoom. Hi, Marty Granger. Um, I think this is Justin's last time to be uh, recording this. And um, I just think it's so important that it is recorded and not only that you have a record for it, but that um, other people in the community can watch it. I don't know how many people usually tune into it, but it would be interesting to know. And anyway, um, I know he's mentioned um, he won't be coming anymore and the price of gas and all this and that, but I was just thinking if we could pay him something, um, you know, maybe he would be willing to come and and do at least the council meeting. And I mean, you know, twenty five, thirty dollars. I mean, if there's usually five members on the on the council, if everybody pitched in five dollars, that would do it. Um, yeah, I just I just think that it, it, we've, we've got to have it. Um, we got to continue to record this. I'd be willing to pitch in $20 a month. Maybe people in the community would be willing to do that. But one way or another, I think we really need Justin. Thank you for your comment. Okay, and on Zoom, could you identify the first person, please? 
Julie Christie. Don't see her there. Okay, let's take well, the next. Oh, her, the yellow, it's going yellow. Uh, it was. Oh, I want to turn the TV up. She doesn't look muted. Well, let's go to the next person. Is that Winona? I could barely hear them. I heard them a little bit. Oh. So I might want to try turning the TV up again. Technical difficulties here. I don't know why we can't hear her. Does it have anything to do with the mic thing? Well, usually mm -hmm. when she comes on, she comes on. She doesn't have a little picture there. So I'm wondering if she's just left. No, her voice thing. Oh, oh, there, there we is. go. Julie, can you hear us? No. We can't hear her. No. How about Winona? She's right there. Yeah, Winona's there. That's what I'm wondering. Should we try her? Winona, can you hear us? Can you raise your hand if you can hear us? And they're not hearing us. I just got a text from Julie says we can hear you but staff needs to turn their volume up. So their volume up. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um, yeah, there's something going on with the yeah. receiving.
Oops, that changes the microphone. And then let's put it. So that should put it all on here, and it's not. Yeah, right? I'm not sure what we got going on. <laughs> Justin, if I unplug that USB. You know, like it doesn't matter. We have, don't have it. In the in the Zoom setting, is the volume turned up? There. I hear something. Can you hear us now? Yes. Yes, we can. Did that work? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear that. Okay, go ahead, Julie. That's good? You guys are good? Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Winona? Winona, can you hear us? Oh, hi, Danielle. Go ahead, Winona. Thank you, Winona. Yes. Are there any other public comments? We have one more, Ken. Okay. Uh, Ken, can you hear us? You there, Ken? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you now. Thank 
train the troops, get the military needs. This is what the Middle East about. It's not about luxury, it's not about the And uh, it's not the place, that's my opinion. And uh, I appreciate uh, the you guys giving me the time to talk about the tournament. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Okay, I think we can move on to item four, City of Blue Lake Bike Month Proclamation for May 2024. May is National Bike Month and staff is requesting a proclamation by the mayor and the council to acknowledge our pledge to promote safe, healthy, and fun biking activities in our community. Staff is proposing several bike events throughout the month of May and will announce the activity calendar in conjunction with the release of the proclamation. And we have our proclamation, which I'm very happy to read before or after we pass it, whatever the pleasure is of the council. Go for it. I'm going for it. <laughs> City of Blue Lake Mike Bike Month. Whereas throughout the month of May, the city of Blue Lake will celebrate biking and the freedom, the joy, and the well-being it imbues within us, as well as the power that more people riding bikes has in making life better for everyone. And whereas throughout this month of May, the residents of Blue Lake and its visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through group rides, educational events, and or by simply getting out and going somewhere by bike. And whereas bicycling has been shown to improve citizens' health, well-being, and quality of life, growing the economy of Blue Lake, attracting tourism dollars and local business spending, and reducing pollution, and whereas the city of Blue Lake and our community partners are also promoting the use of the bicycle as both a means of transportation and recreation year-round to attract more visitors to enjoy our local parks and trail systems, as well as restaurants, retail establishments, cultural and scenic attractions, and whereas these groups are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education during Bike Month and year-round in an effort to reduce collision, injuries, and fatalities and improve health and safety for everyone on the road. And therefore, I, Adeline Jones, Mayor of Blue Lake, do hereby proclaim May 2024 as Blue Bike Month in Blue Lake, and I urge all residents to join me in this special observance. So we need a motion to pass this, and then, Nandi, you can tell us about some of the bike events going on. I will move that we pass Bike Month. I would second that. Motion made by Elizabeth McKay, seconded by Elise Scafani, to... Uh, Have to May. May as National Bike Month. To proclaim May as Blue Lake, Blue Lake Bike, Month. Bike Month. And is there any further so discussion from council? Is there any discussion from audience? I have a discussion. Okay. You went so fast. <laughs> Didn't have a chance. <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to tell us what well, you think. Well, are there hands up, first of all? I have a little something I'd like to just share that goes along with Bike Month. Okay, well, let's see. Let's start with our uh, public. Ken, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I can you hear it? Your turn. Kent, did you want to speak about bike month? There we go. Okay. Who can take his hand down then? His hand's up. Okay. They we can't. They have to do it. Yep. Oh, is there a way? Um 
Winona, did she have a comment? Thank All you. Right. So we these mics aren't. We, we switch back to the uh, mic. Ah. Okay. Um, Should we yell across the room? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Should we turn these off? All right. Let's. No, that's my recording. Oh, okay. Let's move on then to uh, back to the council for some additional comments. Okay, Elizabeth, did you want to make a comment? Oh, um, I will wait and see what uh, is already planned before I ask questions. Oh, okay. And Elise, did you want to wait for the activities to be announced by Amanda? Um, no, I just wanted to share that um, Red Coast Energy Authority has an e-bike voucher program that was launched uh, recently. And um, there, um, anybody can apply for an e-bike voucher. Um, there are bigger vouchers granted to folks that are income qualified, but anybody can apply. And so I just want to throw that out there because it's bike month. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I noticed on my proclamation, it says sign this blank day of May. So maybe that should be oh, switched to April yeah. Yeah. and I'll, I'll, um, sign the clean copy. All right. Um, would you like to announce some of the activities for bike month? Manny? Yeah. So, um, there's a lot of activities taking place all across the County. Um, and we're trying to kind of coordinate our events with the other, um, agencies that are promoting biking. Um, so we're actively advertising some of the other events, including, um, some planned group rides, um, uh, Matter of a Brewery is sponsoring a bike safety, bike repair event. Um, we just received a donation to buy um, bike helmets um, for kids and adults. Um, so we'll be doing a bike helmet giveaway. Um, and then we usually do something with the school where we promote the kids um, for a week trying to ride their bikes to school, um, where we usually do like an ice cream party for and we usually kind of have them come ride by City Hall, um, get a punch um, from city staff, and then they turn that in. And we usually just end up doing a, a, a big ice cream party for the whole school, um, but to celebrate Bike Month. And then um, we're also looking at coordinating um, possibly with RCMBA. They've got some additional activities, and um, we're looking at possibly doing later in May, uh, maybe like a community bike ride. Uh, so. So we'll just be continuously promoting um, biking activities, whether it's Blue Lake specific or countywide, um, just to keep everyone um, apprised and keep the energy um, positive about Bike Month for May. I just want to uh, make sure that we do have a motion and a second, but we haven't had the official vote. So let's go ahead and do that. And then perhaps you would like to make your comment. I'm good. Oh, all right. So we had a motion made by Elizabeth Kay, seconded by Elise Scafani to proclaim uh, May as Bike Month. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. And you're good. You wanted to know about the activity. I was just curious if Bikes There was going to be involved. Do you know them, Melanie? She does Bikes There. Bike what? I think it's called Bikes There. Oh. Uh -uh. Okay. No, but I'd be happy to get some information. Okay. <laughs> Okay, as we move on with a background of uh, technical difficulties, uh, item five, city of. Okay, please mute yourselves on on Zoom, please. All right, item five, city of Blue Lake Lemonade Day proclamation action general information. Humboldt County has declared June first, twenty twenty four, as Lemonade Day. This is an opportunity for our local youth to learn valuable lessons regarding business and entrepreneurship. In order to recognize and promote our youthful entrepreneurs, the city is recommending that council proclaim June 1st, 2024 as Lemonade Day in Blue Lake. And I also have a proclamation, which I can read and then we can pass. Oh, it's shorter than the bike one. It's also May. And also says May. Yeah. yeah, we need to clean that up. 
All right, City Blue Lake <laughs> Lemonade Day 2024. Whereas Lemonade Day is a free community wide educational event providing children with the opportunity to learn and apply entrepreneurial skills thinking and create a foundation for success in the global economy and whereas lemonade day exists to infuse today's youth with the spirit of enterprise teaching basic business skills necessary to become successful contributing members of the community and whereas lemonade day offers opportunities for families businesses schools youth organizations neighborhoods and government agencies to unite for a common purpose to train the next generation of entrepreneurs. Whereas the city of Blue Lake commends the volunteers and participants of Lemonade Day and extends best wishes for a successful and rewarding event. And now therefore, I don't think we need those scans after the whereases. Anyway, now therefore I, Adeline Jones, proud to be the mayor of the city of Blue Lake, do hereby proclaim June 1st, 2024 as Lemonade Day in Blue Lake. And I urge all residents to join me in this special observance by supporting our community lemonade stands. Okay, so we need a motion. So I'll move second. that we uh, proclaim June 1st, 2024 as Lemonade Day in Blue Lake. I second. Motion made by Elizabeth Kay, seconded by Christopher Edgar to proclaim June 1st as Lemonade Day. Was there any further discussion from council? Any discussion from staff and anyone from public? Yes. Yes. With Lemonade Day? Yeah. And so I just want to hear if I'm not supposed to speak or something. Well, you can speak if you please wish to. Speak. Tell us about please Lemonade speak. Day. Please, please join us at the microphone and hope that it works. Hello, testing. It doesn't really make any noise. It's just recording. My name is Jeff Wickheiser, and I've been a resident in Blue Lake for now. I was just trying to figure this out, but 17 years. Wow, and good. And I actually grew up here in Humboldt County. I grew up in Eureka, California. Then I moved down to Southern Humboldt. I lived down there 17 years in Southern Humboldt area. Then now I've been up here 17 years. So I've been all over this county. And I got to say, Blue Lake, from my experience, is the last, really the last safe town that, like my kids, they can ride their bicycles. They can walk the streets. They can play in front on the street. And back when I was a kid in Eureka, I used to ride my big wheel back and forth on the street, on 18th Street and Myrtle Avenue, and it was safe back then. Now Eureka's gone. It's gotten really bad. So anyways, and that's pretty much almost a lot of different residential areas in this county. But Blue Lake still has that touch. And so I feel fortunate to be able to reside here. And... um. This lemonade, National Lemonade Day, that it's a business entrepreneur contest. Um, I'm, I'm going to make it short and sweet, but once the girls started, it's the very first time we've been doing it now. This will be our fourth year. And when the girls were younger, we did it. And the first year, they made $300. Now, last year, they made huh? or $400. Oh, okay. first year. Okay. But then last year, they made a little over 1200 So just in four years, uh, the business entrepreneur guidelines that they have, they, they say you have to make up a name for the business. Then the other thing is you have to keep records of your overhead costs for all the stuff that you... And this, with this lemonade stand, like the girls, we've actually had family members that have joined in on it and have made other items for the lemonade set like uh lemonade brownies cookies brownies uh what's the other one oh, lemonade yep uh okay. lemonade big pops my wife's been involved in it my uh grandparents from both sides of the family have been involved in uncles and aunts so anyways that's how the marketing techniques we've got limited edition collector pins that Huh? That even I mean the fan thing has gotten huge. Their fan club has gotten huge each year. It's tripled, quadrupled. So, uh, talk about 
um, stimulating the economy, stimulating the young generations on doing business, entrepreneur stuff, learning how to run, start a business, to run it. Um, it is actually a success story. You want to hear some success stories? This is one of them, believe it or not. I could go on a tangent about my life, but it's a success story, but I won't. Anyways, um, I think it's a good thing. So that's the only reason why I came here to speak up on that. I'm not a very um, public savvy type person. I'm not a computer savvy. Um, I'm lucky to run a business because I'm not even business savvy, but I've been managing. So anyways, but the girls are real savvy with this one. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Can Thank I you ask so a much. question? Yes, sir. Where will your lemonade stand be? Do you okay, know? So I feel ashamed and I'm a little embarrassed because oh, that question okay. is a surprise for me. I, <laughs> that one took me for a loop there. But anyways, I'll be completely honest. Because of the COVID situation, um, the National Lemonade, lemonade Day Association, they, they actually turned it off, banned it for two years because of the COVID mm -hmm. situation. So, well, we were adamant about it and we, because we had put money into it and energy into it, that we decided to do it anyways. Now, we've had a generous, again, fan, their fan group has populated big time. I don't know if you, some of you might even remember that my girls are known as the Blue Lake Howlers. Back when they did the howling, yeah. So that fun. created a huge. They got really notoriety even yes. now. Yes, you did. But anyways, um, I, I didn't mean to go on a tangent on this, but one of the um people that support them, they are owners of the Pacific Outfitters. Now, I actually, fortunately, know partners of it, and they're actually tree clients of mine. Well, they too support it. So. My brother in Eureka knows the other half the owners. So anyways, Simple and Lame Enters, Pacific Outfitters has given us the opportunity to stage there every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Which, if you think about it, it's a very strategic spot. Yeah. Because it's right there on the intersection of uh, southbound going out. Oh. And then people even coming in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, northbound. But then also southbound people can see us. And we do a big, huge display piece. Oh, okay. So, During Eureka. Yeah. And oh, my gosh, you have... fan, so you'll be in Eureka then. Yeah. And that's okay. the only thing. So, the and, so that's why I was saying, oh, my gosh, that question just threw me for a loop. Okay. Because our location is right now being Eureka for the last four years. Now, because this is actually the first time I've ever noticed it being public here in Blue Lake. Um, I'll you might have to, to franchise. About that. But um, <laughs> yeah, you may have to delegate and yeah, get someone to run something in Blue Lake. Mm -hmm. One of the things, though, I I thought maybe would help promote us is when they do a. Um, one time I talked to Mandy about this, and I it took me for a loop on it because there's an event that goes on over here. I can't remember. Called oh, Annie and Mary Day. Well, that's one of them. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, there's many. There's there many is. festivals. So keep, you know, keep aware yeah. of what's going on because there will be. There yep. would be a fee for some yeah. times to have well, us there. The but thing I was talking. Yep. And so keep that's uh, thing. Uh, that's probably the that. best direction to go. Yeah. 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 Sounds okay. good. Lemonade food. All right, you guys. So you were the howlers, and I was the lady pulling the bell, church bells. You heard that every night at eight eight, 8, 8 p.m. That was me. Time for bed. That was the time for bedtime. All right. Well, congratulations. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other further discussion from public? Winona, did you want to make a comment or is that impossible? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? All right. So this is from the Brown Act. It is ensure that agents who must ensure the public can remotely hear, visually observe, and address the meeting by means of either a two-way audio-visual platform or a two-way telephonic service and a live webcasting of the meeting. We can't hear you. We can't see you. We don't know what's going on. We are very sorry. Putting in the effort to be here, and it, it's, it's really unproductive. We you can't see us? I could see us. I see us on Zoom. Right to be involved. We have an accident. We have to clean any effort. Something needs to be done. This is not okay. This is a reoccurring issue. Thank you. Thank you, if you can hear me. Okay. Can we, can we try bringing that unit closer? 
to where a lot of the speaking is happening and see if that has any effect on the audio. Does it in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to constantly plug in speak. Yeah, it's a wire issue. I see us. Yeah, I'm confused. Wait, 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 I don't understand because of the pitch. Hey, can you see the video? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Oh. Then why'd you say you couldn't? I can see the video. I cannot hear a single thing. Chris, come hang out with me. Come sit here and listen to this. Be pulling your hair out, man. I, not really, because it doesn't change. <laughs> okay, we're 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 trying to change things up here a little. We're trying to make things better, and we sincerely apologize, and we take our duties as being completely transparent very seriously. Yeah, he's turned her off. Disclaimer on your agendas talking about that live meetings will be prioritized and that there are technical difficulties. Okay. Right. That's true. Okay. They're always recorded too. You guys are missing a word. No. Totally available for people to come here. We have problems. Well, some people can't come. It's also not required to, it's not required to all. Well, it's not by any means. That was shut down after COVID ended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm lost there up again. It's the computer this thing's happening. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Are, are you coming back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we still have to take a vote. No, we haven't. No, okay. we still have to take a vote. I'm keeping track of it, Christopher. I am, really. The thing is, you have to allow public before you take the vote. So that's why I've been waiting. But I'm in a whole right. pattern. I know. Motion made, seconded by you. Take some time to. Suss out the system. Okay. We need to move on. All right. Let's let's move on. Um, I sincerely apologize, and if you do want, if we do. Connect with our public. We will have you make a comment at that time. Um, we do have a motion and a second on the floor for uh, proclaiming June first as Lemonade Day in Blue Lake. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. It passes four with one absence. Thank you. Welcome to. Our city council meeting. <laughs> um, okay, we are now on item troubling. six, Hatchery Road Truck Route Improvement Project. 90% plan presentation by SHN Engineering. Discussion and action. 
The city has received funding from the state of California to design and engineer improvements to the designated truck route from Railroad Avenue to Hatchery Road, ending at the county line at the Mad River Bridge. The city's engineers have been working on the environmental design and engineering of the improvements for several years, and the final design is approximately 90% complete. The project has been presented to the council, the community, and special interest groups throughout the design and engineering process. Feedback gained from these presentations and meetings has been incorporated into the 90% design package. Additional outreach included focused meetings with the industrial user group and the installation of mock-up improvements to determine effectiveness and usability. Comments received have been incorporated into the design being presented. And we have our engineer here and representative from SHN. Okay. Yeah, are you guys able to pull it up on the screen? Oh, yay. Yeah. Right. Great. Okay. Yeah, why yeah. don't you introduce yourself and kind of what you do and do a little ad-libbing for a couple of minutes here, and we will move on. Okay. I am Jordan Ledke with SHN Engineering. I'm the project engineer for the hatchery phase of the Blue Lake Truck Route Project. Um, I work under Mike Fogut, the city engineer, and we are working on our design. We're currently at our 90% design. Um, as you guys may know, we finished the design of the Greenwood phase of the truck route, and that's currently out to bid for construction to be built this summer. I presented that a few months ago. And so we are now working on the design for the rest of the truck route. So picking up where Greenwood left off at Railroad Avenue, it goes down Railroad Avenue onto Hatchery down to the bridge. And we do not have construction funding for this yet, um, but we do have funding for the design. So we hope to complete the design in the next month or so, and then hope we hope to obtain construction funding in the next few years. So um, we have been working on, um, similarly to the Greenwood phase, we have been focusing on um, ADA accessibility on the sidewalks, um, curb ramps, crosswalks, focusing on pedestrian and bicycle safety and focusing on um, traffic calming measures to try and slow traffic in the roadway to increase safety for pedestrians and bicycle users. So we have some plans um, being passed around and on the screen that's double-sided. So um, I can kind of walk you guys through the layout. Um, so we're pretty sure that, you know, this is gonna be the final layout. We're basically just finishing up any final details. And we just wanted to present our design to the city um, and, you know, give you the opportunity to ask any questions or give any feedback and that kind of stuff. Um, so I will just walk you guys through the design. So on the left side there, starting at the beginning of Railroad Avenue, um, we have, some traffic calming measures. So the there will be a new crosswalk right there in the Greenwood phase. So this is going to plug into the crosswalk and have stamped brick median that will be flush, but just some surface treatment in the road um, to break up the black asphalt so people will have to stay in their lane and not take that turn wide in hopes to slow down traffic at that turn. Um, we also have a series of bulb outs. Some of them, the purpose is to provide a four foot clear walkway around existing obstructions like utility poles, for example. Um, so we have a bulb out into the road to provide that, that walkway around the pole. And it also acts as a traffic calming measure to choke down the road um visually so that cars slow down but it's it's only eight feet wide so it's no bigger than a parked car there and then we also have some planters um, for visual interest and again traffic calming to break up that eyesight along the road 
We have new curb ramps at each intersection, new crosswalks. Um, they bump out where they need to for ADA compliance reasons, but we tried to not bump the curb ramps out any more than what was needed for ADA compliance. So we come through the intersection of railroad and hatchery, and we plan to do new crosswalks since the existing thermoplastic brick ones are wearing away. We plan to do concrete stamped brick with the white piano keys, similar to the crosswalk we designed in the Greenwood phase. And then coming down Hatchery Road, um, we are making some changes to the intersection of South Railroad Road, where it meets Hatchery. So currently there's kind of, kind of like a left turning lane and a right turning lane from South Railroad onto Hatchery. So we're choking that down to just a single stop that's more perpendicular to Hatchery Road. And we are doing that with paint and uh, painting in a parking space on the road there and painting in the like no drive lines each side of the drive lane. And then we are starting up a bike lane after it intersects the Annie and Mary Trail. Um, so we don't have bike lanes along Railroad Avenue because we want to encourage people to use the Annie and Mary Trail, which runs parallel. Um, but after the truck route crosses the Annie and Mary Trail, we do have bike lanes going down Hatchery Road. The intersection of Hatchery and H Street, we are relocating the crosswalk where it's more centered in the curve so that pedestrians can see cars coming both ways and cars can see pedestrians that are within the crosswalk either direction and we um, shortened up the crosswalk as much as possible by doing a bulb out curb ramp on the H Street side and then coming down to the next page down hatchery then we have um, two bike lanes both sides we are replacing the sidewalk on the north side where there's an existing sidewalk there's no sidewalk there at the moment yet oh on the south side okay on i see side. on the north side you're replacing yes. that yes but you're not putting a sidewalk on the south side no okay all right, That'll sorry. be a bike lane, yeah. Okay, continue. And then, um, <laughs> let's see, about midway to Taylor Way, we're adding a speed table on Hatchery Road right before the turn to get people to slow down before making that turn. We're doing more surface treatment of the stamped brick um, median through the turn between the drive lane and the bike lane to, again, keep people driving within the lane and protect bikers. So this speed table, that consists of this brick? No, sorry, oh. that'll just be a normal speed table. So it's a speed hump? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similar to how we come out of Yeah, but this table runs wider, not just a speed bump. So. Oh, it's a, it's a wide speed. That's why I call it a speed hump. Yeah. It's the a little. The are just like this. The it's even wider. Have a, have yeah. a flat spot on top. Oh, like crosswalk almost. oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Continue. Yeah. So, um, and then around, like I said, around that turn, we have the stamped brick between the drive lane and the bike lane to really protect the bike lane through the turn. And then, um, the Taylor way intersection we are modifying as well. We, um, are getting rid of the turning ink to move the sidewalk forward so that we can move the crosswalk and stop bar forward towards Hatchery from Taylor. So we really wanted to push that stop bar out as far as possible, but still before the crosswalk, to where people would stop there and they could see both directions. We were seeing that with the existing stop being far away from hatchery because of the turn lane that people were rolling through it and because they needed to to see oncoming traffic from the right on hatchery 
So we are eliminating that turn lane to push the sidewalk out, push the crosswalk out, to push the stop bar out so that people will actually stop before the crosswalk and not roll through the crosswalk. So we are also proposing to relocate a portion of the fence on the right side and that vegetation. So because that was one of the key things also blocking that sight distance from people stopping on Taylor Way, looking right down hatchery. So we're gonna get rid of that vegetation, relocate that portion of fence so that once you get to the stop sign, you can see clearly both ways. So you don't need to roll through the crosswalk. So that's where our sign is currently that says Ours Creek Street. District. Are you promoting pro are you promoting getting rid of that vegetation around there or moving it? Yeah, moving it back or on the other side or what's the prep? That's a good question. We can relocate the, it. What's I think there's the a lot project? of opportunity to do something different there now that okay. the district is starting to take a little bit more shape. Okay. Um, so that's part of kind of our branding and signage that we're looking at the best locations for that, what that looks like. Um, the biggest thing, this is such a critical point. Yeah. Um, there's so much pedestrian, bicycle, equestrian traffic that comes through here. And when you have, you know, these intersections of, you know, uses where you have big gravel trucks rolling through, you know, it's it's just really, really unsafe. And so we may lose a little bit of that um, that space, but to accommodate the safe crossing, I think is such a critical um, installation that I think it'll, we'll be able to figure out how to work within it and to make a nicer presentation um, in the future. But we do need to take up a bit of that real estate to just be able to make this happen. Okay. It was all, yeah, yeah. And well, it doesn't the sign look that was great. temporary <laughs> and it's not looking good. It was yeah. looking really overgrown the other day, but it got weak like. Um, okay. Can I ask okay. a question? So you're eliminating, so then that means that that will calm traffic, right? Because when people are turning, the people behind them are going to have we'll to have slow to down. Mean. They're not going to go right. like that, hopefully. Hopefully. Not yeah. <laughs> so is one of the places too that we did a pop up installation. So we coned off where the new sidewalk would be. We toned off that turning lane to make sure cars and trucks could make that turn and they can. Yeah. Okay. Did you um, chat with the truck drivers about it? Yes. How many different truck drivers did you survey on that? Well, no, we, we, we talked with Jared Johnson. We talked with uh, Kernan. We talked with Green Diamond. Mm -hmm. North Fork Lumber as well. Mm -hmm. I have okay. a question. Oh, go ahead awkward space where the Annie and Mary trail comes and the stop sign is stops a car so that it is stopped right in the middle of the trail but there are stop signs on the trail for the for the bicycles is that going to be changed because that's super awkward I think personally I think that the stop shine stop sign should be before the Annie and Mary trail even though it's slightly awkward, also, but you won't be, you won't be able, that'll be two stop signs then. Mm -hmm. you'd, have to, have once. you'd have to have the at the intersection also. Yeah, yeah. Talking about heading into town from the from the hatchery. Yeah, yeah. She's yes. on the first page. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right by the mural, and basically the stop sign puts a car stopped right on the trail. So yeah, and but then you just have to wait for the car. This stop sign does a we still kind of go four ways. Right. Well, couldn't the four way just be? I mean, you can see. How from, could you see on the other side of the building? Yeah, yeah. you can see. Not from that uh, side. I don't know. If you're on Hatchery Road, walk over there to double check. The building, you can't see on the other side of the building where the stop sign yeah, is. So it's from railroad. You see that far? Stand out there. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. You're last. I don't know if you can see some the people at the stop sign. I think I you can. Is it's behind the the speed table. I yeah. think one of the things that we yeah. really wrestled with with this design is we do have a lot of awkward yeah. um, intersections. That is super awkward. And well, that's you know, been very awkward. If we were able to do things, you know, completely fresh, that would be different. But we we do have a lot of constraints that we're working within, and a lot of different usage um, coming into into play at different points in time. So it's not, you know, these designs aren't like 
a hundred percent of what you would love to have, but you know, we're not building brand new. We're having to work within, you know, some pretty constrained spaces. Um, and that intersection has been a big problem for all of, I mean, we've walked it, we've marked it, we've, you know, simulated it. We've, you know, tried to figure out the best way to, um, make these improvements. And it's just, there's just a lot of, a lot of things to work around. Um, I think there's, you know, there's always going to be some issues and some, you know, um, uh, you know, just constraints that we just can't not necessarily get around. Maybe a sign or something that says, you know, watch for bicycle. Careful. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just really, to me, so awkward that you actually stop right in the middle of the trail. Well, you could if there were cars backed up, I would imagine. I think there's about two cars length there before the trail yeah, and the least. stop sign. Really? Okay, yeah. I'll go back over there. Yeah, I I bike that all the time, and it, it's it's difficult. Um, uh -huh. But uh, yeah, you know, so signage cool. would be a good thing. Maybe um, just trail crossing or something like that, just to Why? notify drivers that something there could it's be bicyclists. Take a short pass. But if you took him to the cross intersection and back around, people will still cut. So we figured we wanted to use a speed table, try to slow people down. That's why you have the stop signs on the trail. Because, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These additional traffic calming measures that will slow down that intersection as well. That's one of the big factors yeah, is, good. you know, Slowing maybe down. not doing, you know, not being able to do everything we want. But if we can at least slow traffic down through some of this, that makes it that much safer. Um, right now, there's just a lot of areas where people just don't have to slow down. They can cut corners or they can cut spaces. And that just makes, you know, that really unsafe environment. And we're constrained. I mean, that was where our railroad right away was. Yes. It's not like we had a lot of choices with that. So. You know, in the old days, there was a train barreling through there. <laughs> okay, where are we now? We're over on the second page, and it looks pretty straightforward from there to the uh, bridge, right? Yeah, so we have some more buffers between the drive lane and the bike lane. We have some raised curbed planter areas, so that's more of a hard barrier between the drive lane and the bike lane because we had room to fit it here. Um, and then the road really narrows before the bridge. So we had to go to a combined or shared um, bike, biking and vehicle roads. We didn't have room for bike lanes all the way to the bridge. But All right. That's it. Well, thank you very much. Um, any more questions from council? I'm, um, I have a question about the, this the bulb out or whatever it is on um where h street comes into hatchery the one that's on the east east side of um of that intersection oh that the okay on the right. this one the lower one yeah so that is a mountable concrete like rock stamped concrete mm -hmm. so that we wanted cars to have to go around so they'll have to slow down enough to go around that to get onto h street uh -huh. but any large trucks that can't make that tide of turn they'll just have to go right drive on top of that which will also slow them down so so what what is the um goal speed limit for somebody to take that turn Jeez. i'm just curious i drive that i drive that particular five intersection an hour. yeah five <laughs> miles an hour that was my and guess. um i'm sorry Right, so, so not to take you that can't turn that turn bulb out. I mean, how? I mean, I'm just wondering. Again, I use that that route constantly, and so okay. I found that when you had the um, we did a pop the, up there also. Pop up maybe, thing. yeah, maybe you saw yeah. that. And yeah, and I drove around it a bunch of times, and I had to slow down to probably mm, ten miles an hour to make that turn. So that seems to me in an area where the speed limit is 25. Um, when you're asking people to slow to 10 to make a turn, that seems kind of excessive to me. Perfect. I'd like you to go five if you could go slower. <laughs> I mean, going through, if you look over here at railroad, all these, this is all 25 through here. Right. And all those turns, you can't make a 90 degree turn. 
less than that's not 90 degrees i'm talking about over here on railroad mm -hmm. you can't make those turns here 90 degrees mm -hmm. at 25 miles an hour right, right there correct and so okay. right so this you is have to like really slow no, down less than there. 90 degrees and you're saying you have to slow down to 10. Yeah, you're going this into a downtown commercial zone. So you say it's excessive over here, but it's not excessive over here. Yeah, so I, I guess yeah, I think I'm not at all sure what is that this you're, this you're is, turning onto a. New so you're trying street. to turn it into a 90 degree. Yeah. Yes. yes. Intersection. So is, yeah. So half tree, everyone goes. I mean, we all acknowledge you're speeding on half tree. So as you come into town, we're trying to put in mechanisms to slow the traffic down as you're coming from half tree, coming from the bridge into town. So that's mm -hmm. why we're putting these physical features to help you know, reduce the speeds as you, whether you're going on the H Street or getting on the, the G or you know, on the, as railroad comes around where it's placed. Mm -hmm. That's what traffic calming is all about. And that's why we put that little wall out too, to, again, for pedestrian safety and shorten the amount of distance you have to cross the street. Because a lot of people from town you know, cross there. Right. right. That's the main way to go to the river across the three towns. So that's why we put the bolt out as well to narrow that distance and make it safer to cross. Very nice. Uh, any other questions from council? Open to the public. Any questions or comments from public? Um, the recommended action for this item is to accept the draft plan. And direct staff to proceed with finalizing and submitting the plan. Yeah. Yes, I can, Winona. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Just much right to be involved with anybody else, and that's why Zoom is important. So thank you. Second. Elise, thank you for being the only one that asks questions. You, I'm watching the video, and I hope you all watch the video, too, and see how arrogant you all look, glaring at one another, sitting up there, rolling your eyes like children. Huh. That's all. Thank you. Uh, next comment. Ken, do you have your, do you want, did you want to say something? Ken? Are you able to hear me? Kent, you're on. Kent, did you want to speak? Kent, you're on. I am very well. I'm not that be frustrating used. All right. Um, so we are accepting the draft plan and directing staff to proceed with finalizing and submitting the plan. If there's no further I make comments. a motion to recommend or accept the draft plan and direct staff to proceed with finalizing and submitting the plan. I'll second. Motion made by Christopher Edgar, seconded by Elizabeth. Okay, to accept the draft plan and direct our staff to proceed with finalizing and submitting the plan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Thank you. Item seven. Review and consider approval of exclusive negotiating agreement with property that is owned by the city of Blue Lake. And the negotiating parties are the City of Blue Lake and Kenneth and Eisner and Tasha Eisner. 
The city has been approached by Tasha and Kenneth Eisner regarding the potential purchase and development of accessor parcel number 025-201-021 and 009, known as the City Corporation Yard. Previously, the City Council identified an ad hoc committee to work with the Eisners to review a draft ENA. Mandy? ENA. Oh, exclusive negotiating agreement. Thank you. Exclusive negotiating agreement and to propose any changes to the agreement. The Eisners have accepted the exclusive negotiating agreement as presented, and staff is bringing the agreement to the full council for further consideration. If the council approves the ENA, ENA, I just don't like abbreviations. The Eisners will have the opportunity to work with city staff on development options and to further investigate the site for development purposes. The ENA Exclusive Negotiating Agreement that provides protection provides protection to the Eisners to pursue development options without the ability of the city to negotiate a sale to another party. Any final purchase and development proposals will be brought back to council for further consideration. The ENA does not bind the city, the city council to a sale, but it does require that the city council exercise good, exercise good faith in negotiating a final disposition. And the recommended action is to accept the ENA as presented and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. And we have the agreement here. Um, anything further from staff? And are the Eisners here this evening? They were unable to attend. They're out of town. Oh, okay. <laughs> like we're always right. juggling mm -hmm. our schedule yeah okay so um it looks like the attorney has had the opportunity to look over this yes uh agreement and um it's an order and we've discussed this um many times i'm part of the ad hoc committee so happy to work with the eisners to see what can be done with this property very Who's exciting also part i have a ad hoc oh okay who else is part of the ad hoc plan? Is there any concerns that you guys have to bring to us so we don't have to? I mean, I've read through most of this. We haven't met as an ad hoc committee, and so we don't have any knowledge about any of this that you don't already have. Oh, okay. Um, I think that as an ad hoc committee, we were supposed to discuss this agreement, but the Eisners um, accepted it as it already existed. So there were no changes or anything to make. Um, so we're just... Um, this was a an ENA that was used previously. Is that correct? Yeah, this was developed by the city attorney for um, previous um, options for. Yeah, yeah they so they um, brought this to us once before. Well, it was with another party. Yeah. So the names have basic have are changed, but the plan is basically the same. As right. What right. I mean. So Tell. um. Yeah, so then question. the entire council will be involved in any mm -hmm. further discussions. Correct. Yes. So this um. The Eisners basically um, took the city's draft agreement and agreed to all the terms presented, and those were terms that um, were recommended by our city attorney. Um, so there um, wasn't really a need for the ad hoc committee to meet because they didn't propose any changes. Um, so they felt that they could work within this framework, and um, they actually came in and paid their deposit. And we said, well, we'll hold that, but you know, it has to go back to council for consideration. Um, so they're excited excited to start moving forward and um, they've got some ideas and so this will allow us to now start to kind of formulate some ideas. It allows them to um, do some more site investigation, look at costs, um, maybe present some uh, preliminary development plans um, for council to consider in the future, uh, whether you consider a potential sale or lease of the property. So is this two parcels then? So it's it's kind of interesting. I believe that it's broken up into two parcels, I believe it's because of um, a tax line um, that comes across that area. Um, otherwise, it's it's re referenced as two parcels, but um, in other areas, it's referenced as a single. So I asked Gary Reese, our city planner, about it, and he um, stated that he felt that it they broke that up because there's some kind of tax line assessment that goes across that required that so the county assigns the parcels um, numbers not the city so that's just kind of how that came out so it might have been like an alley or something should have an exhibit yeah there's Why one do I not see it? oh it's at the, the end. very end that's nice yeah some sometimes these properties have like a um 
there was a uh, an alleyway there or something like that. And it could have been like previous zoning um, because it was an old mill site. Maybe it was zoned. This was part of the old machine shop. Maybe oh, a portion yeah. of it was zoned something different. So maybe it was taxed differently. Mm -hmm. um, but when the city assumed it, um, it, we've just used it as one parcel. But it is identified as two for that reason. I guess I don't see the two. The zero two five two zero one zero two one. I don't see that as a parcel. As a number, I don't know what's on your exhibit number. It just cuts it across. It was. Well, the yeah, cross on that. It goes all the way to hatchery. That same that same division across the other parcels too. So one of those should be. Zero zero nine. Oh, it does say zero zero nine there. Zero zero nine and zero one nine should be zero two one. Yeah, zero two one. I think. Let's we'll see. Change that to zero one nine and zero zero nine. Or it should be zero. Or is it wrong in this? Is it wrong in the? Where does it have the number in this? It's on your exhibit. Has the parcel numbers? So we'll that's make, the correct. We'll double check the parcel numbers to okay. make sure that those are requests. Okay. Those yeah. are reflected. Yeah, because it's I think it's nineteen and oh nine indicated in the uh, yeah in the agreement. So we want to make sure that they're we'll according to that. how they're registered. Oh, because the this is 021 is over here. Where? Okay, it might have just been. I might have just. So it should be. It's those two. The, that one. This one. Yeah. And this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, not this yeah. one. Just so we're clear, what we're doing here. Right. Good point. Good catch. Thank you. Okay. Um, so while we're talking about the parcel, yeah, the stuff that's all over it. What's going to happen with all the the stuff? That's is that going to get cleaned up? Or it's not just going to get like moved. Somewhere. No, no, no. So um, one of the the issues that has been discussed with the Eisners is um, cleanup of the parcel. Um, as you guys know, they own Humboldt Sanitation. So um, part of, I think, what might be brought back to council for consideration is um, looking, if you get to a point where you are considering a sale of the property, um, that could be something that could be worked through the agreement for them to clean the site and, you know, have a reduction in the price possibly. So um, they're very well equipped to, to be able to clean the site. And so we've already been working to identify uh, what items need to go. There's a lot of historical garbage on the site that needs to be taken away. Um, so that's that's been something that we've been evaluating for a considerable amount of time, knowing that that's one of the more um, enticing developable properties in the Powers Creek District if it wasn't a city corporation yard. So that's that's something that the um, the Eisners are very well aware of and um, are are fine taking on as an issue. So. Is there anything of value there, the metal on the buildings or anything like that? Um, no, we had a historical survey done just to make sure that, um, you know, that we did have the capacity to remove the building. Um, and through that process, you know, it was identified that there's some salvage um, capacity, but it's going to be really complicated. And a lot of the um, the salvage wood is um, has been treated over the years with different, you know, chemicals and things. And um, it's a, I think someone could go in there and, and, you know, really dig through it to find some items of value. But, you know, a lot of times you, you know, sell off that salvage to get the site cleaned up, you know, so it's a trade off, you know, so we'll just have to look and see what's there. But there's a lot of it's just a lot of surface um, material that can be cleaned very easily. So What's the no... definition of historical garbage? <laughs> um, I would say just materials that have been collected over the years since it's been a city corporation yard for decades. You know, mm -hmm. anything that people our our public works guys, anything people leave out on the corner, you know, in their free pile that doesn't, you know, no one picks up. We have to clean that up. Um, things that get abandoned. Um, we pick up bikes that, you know, have been abandoned or, you know, thrown away. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, just legacy, you know, public works crash that, you know, has been accumulating. And we do, 
you know, take it in and then we'll do a big dump. Um, so we have a couple of big dumpsters down there that will separate metals and garbage and things. Um, but you know, it just, it accumulates over time. Things break down. We, there's quite a few old lawn mowers down there that have probably just broken down over the years from parks and recreation or, um, you know, just, um, have, and public works guys are famous for holding on to everything because everything can be parted out and maybe you need, you know, that one bolt or air filter from 1974 that could fix something. So it's um, <laughs> hard for them to let go of things. It was so. a lot worse years yeah. ago. We had someone that really liked to There's still keep things. cats and we do, we have, we do have cats and I'm they get, good. you know, fed regularly and stuff. So I'm sure we'll, we'll figure all of that out too. <laughs> of course, the pressing question is, what is going to happen about our yard waste? When will we, where yeah. we, can we bring our yard waste on yard yeah. waste? We'll space? be able to facilitate all of that as well. So well, it's yeah. not always been there. It's been other places too. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Uh, Do we have a motion? No, we, need, we need, a um, we need to, we need to accept it? the ENA as presented and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement as the recommended action. But any other discussion from council is certainly do we have uh, to open it up? To yes, we absolutely okay. do. I Before was we make waiting. a motion? Or? You can do that first, and then we'll open it. Okay, so moved. I would second. Motion made to accept the ENA as presented and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement made by Elizabeth Bacay, seconded by Elise Scafani. Any further discussion from council? Any input from public? Back to council for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes four to one absent person. All right, we are now on item eight. Personal favorite of mine. Um, ordinance number 544, Water Deposit Policy Amendment. The City Council directed staff to prepare an amendment to the city's water regulations allowing the return of water deposits based upon a demonstrated ability to make an on-time make on-time payments for a period of 2 years in order to amend the water regulations the city must adopt a new ordinance that amends the current municipal code language presented is the proposed amending ordinance along with the proposed policy language council introduced the ordinance and conducted the first hearing Reading. at the regularly scheduled Sorry. council meeting in March the second reading will take place at the April 23rd meeting, and the language will go into effect 30 days from the date of adoption. And we have our ordinance number 544, which will allow water deposits to be returned to customers based upon a demonstrated ability to make timely payments. There will be a $30 fee for administering costs, but other than that, we do have an ordinance here before us. And this would be the second reading and the adoption. Is there any further questions or comments from council? This is a fund that's pretty much been rotating, so it's it's there for us to use. Any comments from public? Thank you to the Prince family for bringing this forward. I appreciate you being here as well. So back to council for a second reading and adoption by title only. We need a motion uh, and a I make second. A motion that we accept this ordinance. Or are we? Oh, we're just reading it. That's it. Uh, no, that we conduct the second reading and adopt by title only ordinance number five four four. If you didn't do title only, you'd have to read the uh, whole ordinance, which is not so bad in this case. But some ordinances are really long. I make a second as so read by our mayor. No, you're you are you're making the motion. Motion. I'll I'll second that. Okay, motion made. I'll second that. Motion. Okay. And singing. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need some entertainment. Yeah. All right. So the motion has been made by Christopher Edgar, seconded by Elizabeth McKay, to conduct the second reading and adoption by title only, ordinance number 544. And this is an ordinance, so we have to have a roll call vote. Mayor Jones? Yes. Mr. McKay? Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Edgar? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 544 is uh, going to be days. 
in, in 30 days will be a new ordinance, and I'm reading it. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Blue Lake modifying Section 13.08.060 of Chapter 13.08 of Title 13 of the Blue Lake Municipal Code regarding customer deposits. The title. Oh, you had us worried there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to read the whole thing. By title only. All right. Very good. And note that there is one abstention or one absence. Not abstention. Okay. We have item eight. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. It's something we had talked about and now it's law. So 30 days from now, May 23rd. <laughs> All right, we are now on item nine. Okay. Well, I did ask for public input, but uh, go ahead now. Okay. I was just going to say, how will this be um, reimbursed to customers? Will it come as a check? Will it be credited towards uh, future bills? How will that be? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we well, would do it as a check. Well, you need to come to City Hall during their open hours, 9 to 12, 1 to 4, Monday through Friday, except holidays. And um, and then they will uh, see your um, records. Thank you. Well, we'll actually, we'll actually be pulling all those records ourselves. So Are you going to be notifying customers of this? Yeah. So this goes into effect. So it's two years of... Um, on time billing right payments and then they'll be reimbursed up and so our system will pull those out so, oh okay yeah. oh so they'll automatically get a check in the mail mm -hmm. subtracting the yeah. thirty dollars no and oh, they don't, don't have, have to, have to they don't have to wait there, two so. more years do they, they do have, yeah. oh they have to wait two yeah. years yeah. well because it goes been into here effect for two years it goes into effect in 30 days, mm -hmm. and based upon that, you have to pay for going forward the two years. Oh, so it isn't retroactively no. two years? No. Oh, okay. Mm. No, we weren't. We couldn't go retroactive. It's Our what system wasn't set up that way, so we've had at... to do some modifications to our accounting system, our billing system, to be able to, to be able to track it. this. So. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, not as two good years will be I... here before oh, you know it. <laughs> All right. Good questions. Okay. Good clarifications. That? Not good news necessarily. <laughs> All right. We are now moving on to number nine discussion regarding retail <laughs> cannabis okay. operation. Oh. Sorry, that might have been public comment for the last item. Uh, I didn't see that hand earlier. Hello. 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 This is JG. That's how we see it. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't know. Um, to piggyback on what some of the prior commenters have been saying about the issues with the audio, uh, I really did want to be able to right. attend tonight and listen, but I have to work, so I have to attend remotely. Um, and the audio isn't just poor, it's actually incoherent. Um, and Winona did mention that it's a Brown Act violation. So I just thought I would suggest that you guys look into Assembly Bill 2449. Um, it was written into law, I think, in 2022. This is not on your... Uh, and it's it's right, this is... Remote uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. And it does acknowledge that technical issues can arise. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's natural. It's going to happen. But it does say there's steps that you need to take. But it does. Um, one of them is notification. You need to let the public know uh, what the issue was and what are the steps so, that are so being taken. So this is not resolve. something that's on our agenda right it's now? It's not I'm commenting on what we just talked no. about. Um, so... Down yeah. Uh, Tony has to. Or do you no, have to? Mayor does. have to direct this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not the point of order. The, this discussion is... Well, you must be able to hear me because you just said you can't hear me. Okay. Um, okay. So um, we take everything that we do here seriously. We thought that your hand was concerning the item. 
Perfect. Can, can you okay. just give me a chance? Microphone typically not very well. But if, if that one was, did this mean that what she was saying was not accurate? Was it? Oh. It's not her time to talk. Yes. What she's saying is accurate. No, no, it wasn't in, listen. we were on a different item. What so. was saying is accurate? No. Uh, no. It's illegal? It's not. No, it's not, no, illegal. It's not illegal. Yeah. The, the COVID it's protocol illegal. was changed by the governor. Um, it's been at least a year. And we have a disclaimer that live meeting logistics will be prioritized. The quality of the Zoom teleconference meeting cannot be guaranteed. Technical challenges experienced by either the participant or the city will not interrupt or halt the progress of the meeting. I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to do anything it's like that. Point of order. It's we're yeah. Point of order. Track. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely off. Point over Bronx Extension Cord. I'd like to try to plug this in and move it closer to the speakers and see if um, the folks on Zoom can hear better. I think that's going to mean that um, we're going to lose power to this unit, and so that may mean that um, everybody's going to have to dial back in or log back in. Does that make sense? They should have to. No, you know, like unplug this. Okay. Let's do this. Sorry. Um, city staff and the community could volunteer an hour of their time to do this when it's not a meeting and we can get this all dialed in. They're perfectly ready for the meeting and everything works fine and then things happen, glitches happen. This this unit has this device has not functioned properly for the last two meetings that we've had. It was fine last meeting. Well, we had people commenting. People were commenting. But they were saying that they could wow. hear. They were making comments. Can you hear me now? Do we have to yell? Yeah, I'm still here. Thank you. Can you hear any better? Can you say that again? Can you hear us any better than before? Well, you're standing right next to it. It it is better, yes, but it's a little it's a little hard to understand. Is this any better? It's better, yeah. I'm turning, I'm turning. You're standing right next to it. I'm just wondering if you can no. tell the difference. So which box going on here? That is part of the logistics. Oh, and we've lost the new one. Oh, it's not plugged on. I saw the camera go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, such a disruption. Okay, we're back. All right, I hope that you can hear us a little bit better. Is it any better? It's so very hard to understand. Okay, well, my mouth is as close as I can get to the microphone without. You're not going through that. You have that to mic. yell over there. You're going through that. Okay, mic. can you hear me now? <laughs> I would like to just take just another 30 seconds to say I think that this equipment is no longer functioning as it should, and I believe that we need to replace it before the next council meeting. Okay, we can discuss that as an agenda item. I tried to get it on the agenda this week, but you wouldn't let me. Okay. So, all right. Um, let's let's keep on. moving forward. Okay, we were on item nine. And this was the cannabis ordinance to allow limited retail options. 
Staff was asked to find sample ordinances and recommendations for consideration by the council. The city attorney, Ryan Plotz, recommended reviewing the city of weed, ironically, uh, their retail cannabis ordinance as a starting point for discussion. Staff had attached the recommended ordinance uh, to this and recommends that council review and provide comments at a later meeting date. So, um, Mandy, would you like to fill us in on how we got to this point? Sure. So um, at the last council meeting, um, we had an item on to discuss opportunities or options to uh, facilitate uh, retail cannabis operations in the city. Uh, currently, our municipal code does not allow any type of commercial or retail operations. Um, you had asked staff, uh, council had asked staff to bring back some samples of other ordinances that we could look at and see if um, there were uh, any cities that might have language that might be reflective of uh, what the city of Blue Lake might be looking for. Um, so I talked to our city attorney, Ryan Plotz. Um, he represents a lot of municipalities. Um, he didn't have one locally that uh, was really reflective of kind of what Blue Lake uh, would be looking for, but he did uh, recommend the city of Weed um, as a starting point. Um, they do have limited retail, limited permits, um, and so he recommended that the council uh, read through this, maybe highlight things that you like, um, and then we could bring forward um, we could bring forward some um, recommendations at a later date um, and and go from there. Okay. Not so much. Thanks um, for coming. So the one thing that I kept looking for that, unfortunately, Angela Shull isn't here right now, but she had mentioned that, I think it was the City Council of Eureka, I think, where permit people that were wanting to have a permitted um, cannabis um, business came to the council meetings with that. It looks like this, from what I was reading, is they just go through the the staff as far as permitting goes. They don't need to come to directly to the council or a planning commission, for instance. Yeah, I think um, that's something that you guys could change and propose. I think you would want to limit the number. And, you know, I mean, if you set up a good framework um, for evaluation. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, you still need your mic to be taped. Yeah, I'd like to limit it. Yeah, the two and one. I like that. Yeah, two and one. Small. We're small town. Mm -hmm. I mean, Two is a lot for us. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you're really not small. saying that you're, I mean, you don't even know if anyone would even be interested in doing anything. Right, you're right, just facilitating right. if there was an interest. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, normally, you know, through your municipal code, um, you permit certain activities um, through your zoning regulations. And then that can go through either a process of evaluation first off by staff to see if it meets, you know, um, the permit requirements or the zoning regulations. Um, that's kind of the first layer. If it meets all of those, um, normally what we do is, you know, put a project forward to the planning commission, um, staff writes a report and a recommendation. Um, so, you know, that's a way you could go as well. Or if you wanted to have a special commission designated to review these, you know, it's up to council how they, how you want to format that. Yeah, I like the idea of having an extra layer or two like before it came to us, like going through the staff to make sure the permit is all filled out correctly and fees are paid. And that's another question is what would the fees be? Um, would they just be the normal business fees that we have? And then moving on to the planning commission to further massage it and then bringing it finally to us. Yeah. So they come forward with the action plan and business plan i don't think we should charge them any more than a normal business though i mean that's all because it's a normal business it's, it's a normal, normal business. business yeah yeah right we want to encourage small businesses yep. yeah um so those are the only things i think i would add to this um Plus, with our small town and zoning there isn't very many spaces that would be conducive of having anything 
No, but you do have opportunities in the Powers Creek District as new development comes forward. So you want to think about that. We're not always going to be limited by what we have now. Yeah. Um, people could also, there's um, potential for some properties in town to be, um, you know, renovated or knocked down and rebuilt. And, you know, so um, I think you definitely want to think about footprint um, and, you know, there might be ways to look at, um percentage, square footage percentage, you know, in your downtowns um, so that you're not getting too top heavy. You know, if you, one of the things that we ran into with um, the Powers Creek District when we wrote the Opportunity Zone is that the prior commissioners and council, you know, really tried to think about all the things that could go down there and tried to facilitate that through these zoning regulations. And what we found was it was almost overthought, you know, and I get it because, you know, you're trying to write this, um, these regulations to promote activities you want to come in. But sometimes, you know, by overriding and overthinking, you start to pen yourself in. And as new industries emerge, new ideas emerge, new um, products emerge and needs emerge from your community, you start to find that you've precluded um, business because it's, it's, too much of a box. So, you know, so that was something that we wrote, you know, with Opportunity Zone is to let economics drive business a little bit more rather than us trying to, you know, come up with every scenario or idea. Um, I think in this instance, you might want to be a little bit more um, restrictive in the thought process. Uh, so. Yeah, the other thing I was thinking was the proximity to the school, mm -hmm. but That's we really laws about that. Yeah, we really and we really don't have to worry about that so much because our downtown and our district yeah. are both pretty far away, and I don't think there's any area around the school that's zoned commercial. No, I mean I it, this is going to be something that we'll have to do some additional research on. The, I'm not sure what the um, implications are to the city as far as state mandates for regulation. Mm. I know that was one of the areas that we, you know, that really we considered um, pretty in-depthly when we looked at precluding commercial because there was so much regulation on the city side that we just couldn't afford to even get in the game. And it wasn't really something we, you know, we saw that, you know, this was going to equalize at some point and, you know, it just really wasn't something that the city decided they wanted to um, risk. Um, but the invest, the upfront investment for the city for, you know, track and trace and all of these things and regulations and inspections, we just didn't have the resources for it. So I'm not sure what comes with retail. Um, I know that there's regulations with dispensaries about security and, and different things. And I don't know how that translates back to the city having to regulate um, these permits. Um, so that'll be something that we'll have to look at too and bring back to you. Yeah. And there could be existing businesses right now in town that may want to expand into this or something, mm -hmm. but they're already there. I'm not thinking of anything. I mean, there's specific. a lot of already commercially available cannabis products that you can buy at retail and resell. So if there was a small market that wanted to have a small cannabis section of sodas and beers and gummies and candy, they can. That's completely legal. It's just whether they get the proper permitting to do so. So you're saying that if there was a store like say the Eisners had their little store over there and they sold and they cigarettes and other sell. stuff and they have those proper permits. They can have some, they can have cannabis yeah. product products. Even if we had a, no, they can, or, uh, we have to have, we have to have this. We have yes. to have this. We have to have this. can't just yeah. do it. We right. Have to have this. But we have to lift what we did. Right. Right. We put it. Yeah. yeah we we said no down. to everything. We, need to we did. Do something so we like we did here and <laughs> make it. So it's, you know, conducive I couldn't for them it. to it's hilarious. It was hard not to make a joke. Make stuff up. Forward. You cannot make it up. Um, yeah. And that was the other thing was that at the time, we had actually done this before uh, marijuana was legalized in the state of California. We saw this coming. But we didn't want to make uh, the rules up. And now we have weeds rules. <laughs> weed, weed rules. Weed, weed rules. Yeah. And so... Um, so we don't have to invent the wheel, more or less, and you know, use right. Kind of, right. We just yeah. have to change it if we want to, because I was looking through this and I did not see anywhere where it said first it comes to 
staff, then it goes to planning commission, then goes to council. And I don't know how to put that in legalese terms, but that would be I think we just direct one thing it. I'd like yeah. to see. Yeah, so, so I think what would be helpful is if you guys um, at the next staff. meeting, you could bring back some um, concerns, oh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that way, um, just give everyone a little bit of time to go through it. Yeah, because that was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. And like I said, we still have to do a bunch of research on our side on too, like what what is um, the city on the hook for as far as regulation and, and permitting? Because it's it I know the the regulatory levels and layers um, get pretty thick through this process. How much do you have to keep up on? Yeah. Versus like, yeah, I know county has special employees that just, mm -hmm. that's all their job is. Oh, yeah. Well, a large city would probably be able to to have that, whereas we can't. But if we only have two places, up to two or something like mm -hmm. that, which I don't know that that necessarily needs to be in our ordinance, but it could. I think it should be. I think no, you should limit them. Limit. Yeah. Okay. Limit. All right. I don't want every yeah. corner so of, like, so those are some ideas. Two retails and one non-retail, which is which would just be like a storage site. I yeah, think. I don't know if you really want to get into that. I mean, that no, starts that's... to get into the commercial side, and that's where there's a lot that goes into it. If you're not retail, there's really no benefit to the city. Well, if it's we're a non-storefront not... storefront retail. So what even does that mean? Is it at the storage facility? That's what it said on the, in the. If it's not generating sales tax and the, all the different tax revenues, it might be like um, then... delivery. Maybe they just they oh, don't yeah. sell at the front, Clearing but they deliver out the back something. or something. Yeah. yeah, there's no benefit to the city to have that. So non storefront, no more than one retail non storefront cannabis sales permit. Yeah. So it means that it is a retail store, but you can't walk in and buy it. Online. It might mm -hmm. be like a delivery oh, service, like she was saying. Well, if it is online, then wouldn't the sales tax go sales tax. to whatever whatever location the or product shipped. goes to? It depends. I mean, there's um, there's different the way they calculate it. There's also the the impact side if it's being manufactured there, and then being shipped out. There's implications on that side. So I I would have to know a little bit more about how the product is being developed. What is this? But we're not talking about um, manufacturing no. in this. This is strictly sales. No. I mean, I think what we I've heard council say, kind of the vision would be like a small shop, like say something like Blue Heron, you know, helps sells different tinctures and things. And maybe they have a, a cannabis section as well or something, but, you know, not anything uh, not anything large, not manufacturing, not, you know, product distribution, uh, anything like that. What about so, like a cafe where people go in there and imbibe? Well, I'm pretty sure some, most of the shops will let you, but I only think there's one real cannabis cafe in. There's one in Old Town. Yeah, I, I, know yeah, I don't so know too. that that's what you want to get into. I mean, I'm opening that up. I, know, I, I I'm opening that, that I up. I can see it. Yeah, they had okay. them in um, Amsterdam. I mean, we have, I know, well, the one that you mentioned there, there's two now in Humboldt. Then. There's that, uh, there's one on the south side of Eureka and there's one in Old Town. Right. Yeah, I, I just yeah. imagine, like, I want to just be a little bit cautious about what the impacts are back to the city just for regulations because like i said we we are already so short staffed to to get into a whole level of other regulatory authorities right. um can suffer consumption i mean, i i just don't know what that means for well i don't either i mean you so have we'll have to look into it. that so what that is yeah yeah of course the impact on this the city staff is a, a large part yeah of we don't community. want it to cost the city no yeah. and, right because uh, no, we supposed to make money to generate the city taxes. Taxes. Yeah. yeah and not just that if, like if it is something that's overwhelming where it's like a monthly or access to the permitting and making sure the regulations are up to par you're either hiring someone outside to come mm -hmm. do that or you're overloading our three-person staff right we can look into we'll just look into that side of it a little bit more but if you guys like i said if you want to take this and and read through it and come up with ideas yeah. or if you find other things um mm -hmm. if you do some research and um that way ryan has something to kind of pull together as well i have number one limit of two retail number two level of permitting staff planning commission council number three no manufacturing and number four cafe with a question mark and number five, um, how about some projections of income to the city so that we can 
have some idea at what level um, a business has to be successful for this to be of any benefit to the city financially. Because that's the whole purpose of looking at this, right? Mm. Is potentially tax revenue yeah, to tax, the city. Yeah. So, tax so if it's if yeah. we can if we can come up with some way to make some projections on that level so that we know if we're doing this just to break even or we're doing this to make enough money to float parks and rec or whatever. I mean, we need to have that number. That otherwise um, otherwise this is just a whole yeah. It could be a big waste of time. Touching on that, uh, we can look at Eureka, Arcata. Yeah. They both have Rio lots of cannabis dispensary. I'm pretty sure they have more taxes than just the county and state. So see what, if they are having um, more of a cannabis tax to have those distributors um, rather than just a base sales tax, because that is probably why they are making more money off of those things. Well, there's a bunch of other taxes. Um, yes. But I'm talking about just that would just benefit the city. Right. Yeah. And that's why, because I know Arcata, Rio Del, they all have the cannabis and they also have ex, um, more taxes on top of the taxes that they already pay. Right. So, so some go to the city and some go to the yes. state. Yes. And it's not just sales tax. They get sales tax plus a cannabis sales tax. Okay. And what is a non storefront retail site. I want to know what that is. Please. Shipping? That's what I'm thinking, but I want to figure it out because it's in that in weeds mm -hmm. contract and they say it's limited to one. Right. So I want to see what that is. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, impact on like regulatory impacts on the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kids. I don't want us to have to, you Who's know, make up our whole... Does the county come out and do it? Does the city come out and do it? That is Paradise K a non... What did you say that was called? A non... something? It's called non-storefront. It's non-storefront. Page storefront. 5. Paradise K, that's cool. It might be. I mean, right. we buy stuff from them direct. Uh -huh. So they don't have a storefront necessarily, but you can buy right. products from them. Yeah. It says non-storefront cannabis thing. sales businesses may receive orders, make deliveries, and receive shipments at oh. such times as may be specified in the conditional use permit issued there for. Okay. I think it should be there. Yeah. So, so there, they just so it's deliveries, receive shipments. Yeah, mail order. Mail order. Yeah. Weed. Well, it might be like it might be like weed pizza delivery. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, do we have we have ordinances about um, permitting about uh, storage units? Don't we? What's that? Uh, storage units. Isn't there some issue about zoning those uh, zones where those aren't permitted? Yes. Um, I but think I don't those know are. That yeah. With this idea, yeah, seems like it's the same, a little bit of the same thing. All right. Well, that so gives us a hand a little... up. Is that uh, an old hand? That's a new hand. No, that's a new... <laughs> we can try it. <laughs> it's always up to trying. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Let's open it up to public. Ken, did you have something you wanted to share? Yeah. 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 See the mayor.
Thank you, Kent. All right. Um, that gives you a little something, and then we'll bring this back um, at our next meeting with some ideas and concerning some of these issues that we've brought up. So that's the direction to staff. Thank All you. right. Yeah. We're on page two. And this is our First Amendment auditor discussion. Council Member Edgar requested that a discussion item be added to the March agenda to discuss the First Amendment auditor incident. As Council Member Edgar was not in attendance at the March meeting due to illness, Council asked that the item be brought back to the April meeting for discussion. Staff is available to provide an update on, on staff and Council trainings, security and signage installations and the development of a First Amendment audit policy. And I know I took the online um, quiz, I guess it was, and information and uh, asked. Uh, and I hope others did as well because it's pretty uh, important to have that happen. Um, so follow through with that. It looks like the uh, office now has signage that says that, of course, the auditors are within their rights to be filming us at all times. However, they have to have permission from us to be on any social media, such as Facebook or Twitter or X or whatever it's called. So um, I think those were looked at by the attorney and found to be um, in accordance with the law. Um, is there any other follow-up on, on this? Has yeah, by so, staff? Um, so staff have all taken training on what First Amendment, what a First Amendment audit is. Um, it was something, obviously, that we um, didn't really know anything about and didn't really understand um, kind of what was happening, but we're um, much better equipped now to, to be able to deal with a situation like this. Um, we've also installed cameras in our offices and signage. Um, uh, to delineate um, staff only spaces. And um, we are in the process of developing a, um, a policy um, that can be adopted through our personnel regulations. Um, so that's just in kind of the end of its draft form and that'll be brought back to, um, to our attorney and to counsel at some point. Um, it's not a very long policy, but this is kind of a new arena. Um, our insurance companies are dealing with this across the board with um, different cities and um, entities. And so there's a lot more information available now and training. So um, we'll be incorporating this training into our regular staff training. And um, we probably won't make it a yearly training, but um, all new employees will be required to um, take the training so that they're also aware. Um, but other than that, I, you know, like I so said, we, gosh, I have a tape going in. Um, we definitely learned a lot through the experience. Um, one of the things that is you'll see um, posted at all of our desks is uh, a disclaimer um, stating that um, while, you know, we respect in the public's right to record, um, we don't as individuals give permission for um, to be posted on social media channels. Um, that's something that is vested within the various social media platforms own regulations that anyone who monetizes any type of uh, video has to have the uh, permission of the person that is being posted. Um, and obviously that didn't um, take place. And that was is a violation um, of all of those media platforms. It's just a matter of whether you um, and get the attention of the platforms to remove the videos. And they do remove them from time to time um, based upon um, those, those authorities. So, so that's something that we have um, posted at all of our desks. Um, and I think it's reasonable to, to have that. Um, but other than that, we've um, also provided additional signage um, stating that, you know, we can only have one person at a time at the counter because, you know, our, our space is very small. Um, and, um, we have our hours posted and so that's kind of where we're at with that. Yeah. And as long as they have, uh, advertisements in some of these, um, media outlets such as Facebook, then that is a monetary 
Um, That's how they make money. That's what these are about. These First Amendment audits aren't about the First Amendment. They're about making money from from clickbait videos. All right. Christopher, did that explain for you what you wanted to know? It was uh, brought up at the last meeting that I was here that we all took this these uh, trainings and everything, and it's uh, kind of sucks that it took them to come in and do what they did to us to get these trainings and everything, but it is what it is, and we got it taken care of now. Yeah, I mean, I just now got another notice from somebody that looked at the video. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah this just came yeah. through at 6 24 p.m we get them all the time now and they routinely say click here to see the video click here to see right. the video show your friends send them this link and it's right. like so it's all over okay yeah all right well it's all that part of being cool. educated and we are now educated about this so are you asking that not more than one member of the public be in the in city hall at one time not a city hall but our front counter um there's times where we just get too many people trying to come in and we only really have space at the counter for one person and especially during covid you know that was a big thing everyone no one really feels comfortable anymore being squished into a space um so we are trying to just make those accommodations sometimes we can bring someone back to the conference room if they want to wait or we have a chair where people can sit but we're trying to not have have too many people come in at once because the other issue is it's just so loud in city hall so when you have multiple conversations going on staff is on the phone staff might be talking to someone they might be talking to each other then they're trying to help someone at the counter and then there's another person behind someone it just gets to be too much um so you know we can make accommodations obviously you know if a couple comes in together or whatever but we just are trying to um make it more um more of a pleasant experience to to be at the counter so Well, I wonder, um, it's a pretty sizable room if we could move the counter back um, to accommodate two or three people, especially like when the weather's bad and people, maybe it's not, it's not great to ask them. We don't make people stand out in the weather. I mean, we can, you know, if they want to stand in the hall or something, but part of, part of this issue too is not having a bunch of people coming in or one person coming in and standing, you know, at your counter and, you know. Um, that was one of the things that we they talked about in the policy is limiting the time um, that someone can just sit there and film you all day with, you know, and interrupting business. And so that was one of the recommendations was just limiting the number of people at your counter so that if someone else comes in and someone is taking up the space because they want to videotape you for an hour you know, we have to be able to do business, you know, so being able to have a legitimate sign that says, you know, we allow one person at the counter so that we can properly, um, you know, conduct business, you know, then I think that's a reasonable thing to have. So we don't, like, so we don't make people stand out in the rain or the cold, you know, we accommodate people as best as we can. All right. Okay. Um, it seems there's really no uh, action on that item, so then we'll... Yeah, hand up. Is that an old hand? That's a new hand, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, we're discussing our First Amendment auditor. Um, did you have a comment to make on that, caller? Ken, did you want to speak? Yeah.
Thank you. So did you say that um, our city attorney is also talking, you're talking to our city attorney yes. about all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And when you said something about the insurance mm -hmm. being impacted, it means the insurance being impacted or the insurance insurance is um, participating somehow in Sierra. So Sierra is um, our insurance provider and they are helping to educate um, communities on these issues. Um, they've had several um, member cities that have had these types of interactions. Um, some of them have ended up um, becoming a lot more confrontational than ours. Um, some of them have been become physical. Um, the, they've had to defend some city employees um, over actions related to these um, instigations. And so they're taking this very seriously and educating um, cities on how to, um, you know, conduct themselves and how to protect themselves. Um, and actually the training that you guys all that we've all participated in was recommended by Sierra. So this is something that they're working on. They have draft policies that they're also working on. So um, these these instigations are taking place across the nation, um, and so it's um, a learning curve. But we're tr they're trying to get ahead of it. Okay. Um, okay. So, so thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. <clears throat> so the staff uh, directing staff is appropriate. Sounds like continuing on as long as we are within the law. That's the important thing. Okay. Um, no oh, action sorry. on that? I have one more question. Oh. When you said that there's a bunch of cameras in City Hall now, mm -hmm. you just, you have cameras that are running all the time to um, video everything that's going on in, the, in City Hall? Is that it? They are running um, during specific hours and then they are set to come on um, based upon motion um, after hours. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns from council? Um, so are is the is whatever's videoed on those cameras subject to PRAs? Um, I would assume it's a record, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure how how that works. Um, but I would assume there's some mechanism under under that to mm -hmm. to do a PRA. And um, okay, so how many are there? Uh, there are three. Are they mostly in the front area? Uh, two in the front um, and then one in the back catching all the entrance points and exits and the windows. Okay. And I know you guys received tons of emails as well. We received a lot of threats, um, a lot of threats of people come that were um, going to come and vandalize the buildings and city staff's vehicles and, you know, all kinds of things. So um, we felt that it was imperative to have those cameras in place as well. Okay. I agree. Okay. Anyone, any other concerns? Okay. All right. We um, are moving on then to item 11, the council budget training discussion. Uh, Council members, Gafani has request, requested staff to conduct a budget training in preparation for the upcoming fiscal year 24-25 budget discussions. The city accountant is available to meet with council members and recommends that this training take place outside of a council meeting setting. Due to the accountant's work schedule, staff recommends that council members that are interested in receiving additional budget training work with the city clerk to schedule a time that meets everyone's scheduling needs. It's possible for two council members to meet with the accountant without triggering the need to agendize the training as a meeting. Yeah, I so talking with Scott, um, his his schedule is kind of all over the place. Um, he really didn't want to um, do a training during a council session um, just because it's restrictive and um, the time frame. Um, so he had asked if um, if council would consider, you know, making um, setting up some time where you guys could meet with him um, either in pairs or individually. I don't know how many people are interested in getting training on um, on the accounting, but he felt that it would be more flexible and um, a better use of his time if um, if this training took place, you know, through this the method that he's recommending. I think there might be a misunderstanding about my request. 
um, I wasn't necessarily requesting training um, for understanding budgets in general, but um, having time to review our next budget and to fully understand and have a full presentation about our our, our upcoming budget. Well, we, so that we will we can, have that. Yeah. But we didn't have it last year, so that's why I'm requesting it this year. Well, I think it could be helpful if, because our budget doesn't change much from year to year, we have the basically the same funds, um, a lot of the same revenues coming in. I think you could spend some time with Scott to go over our current existing budget, and it's going to give you um, a really good picture of what the next budget going forward is. Um, we just don't have a lot of changes in that budget. You know, we might pick up a grant here or there, or some projects might, you know, go from a planning stage to a construction stage or implementation. But as far as our main funds, um, they really are pretty stagnant. Um, so I think there's value in looking at what we have now. We'll probably present it in much the same format. Um, uh, Scott's been working for a number of years to kind of get the budget to a point where it's, you know, it's kind of plug and play, you know, like I said, because everything is is pretty routine and regular. Um, so I think there's value in um, maybe working through what we have if you want to do that, because we do. It does take Scott quite a while to put the budget together um, once we give him numbers and he starts feeding it into the system. Um, it takes it takes a while, and we usually end up running right up against the deadline. Um, we haven't, in the last six, seven years, we haven't had to do any um, continuing resolutions or anything. We've been able to make our um, our deadlines for implementation, um, but it is a lot. It's a big haul. Um, you know, we just don't have we don't have a an accountant that's on all the time, so it makes it a little bit tough. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but um, I think there's a lot that can be learned just through what we what we currently have. Well, I think maybe what can happen is any city council person that feels the need to get more information about our budget and look at it in more detail can arrange a meeting with Scott. I personally have been through a number of these now that I'm pretty familiar with how they they go. But if anyone else feels the need, then I think that's completely up to the council person to do that. Elizabeth, are you interested in doing that? Yeah. And Chris? Oh, no, thanks. We don't know if Angela is do interested, but if the two of you, you know, want to work out something. Yeah, I think I can meet with Scott sometime. Okay. Yeah, I, I just think it's important that the council understands um, what we're signing off on in June when it comes to us. And um, there's just so much uh, detail in there. And I've spent quite a bit of time on it and spent some time with Scott. Um, and there's still some concepts I still have a little bit of trouble with. <laughs> just cash balances and this and that and the ins and the outs. Um, those are just a little hard to wrap your brain around because it's not as simple as you would expect it to be or straightforward. But um, but just in general, just just understanding where the money's coming from and where it's going, um, you know, I feel like we need more time than a council meeting to really um, to really get that and to be making responsible decisions. So, all right. Well, um, it sounds like you're interested in it, and Elizabeth. I'm not sure about Angela, but as long as there's yeah. just two of you, you you can meet. Yeah. Or if Angela's interested, we would just agendize that work session and could have it here and public could attend. Is that correct? Scott yeah, really Scott didn't, didn't want, want to do that. To do that. Yeah. He no, it's something that we should just do, meet with him and have him un explain. It. And then when we come, we understand what we're looking at. That's what he wants. Is my yeah, opinion. that was more, he just really didn't want to work under the framework of an agendized meeting and, you know, all of what comes with that. I think he might have been, I don't know, maybe he had he attended a meeting and was eventually. a little bit scared. But, and he just didn't think it was flexible enough to be able to really sit down and answer questions. And so, yeah, um, yeah. I would rather meet with him, not in a meeting personally. Yeah. I think you'll get more from it, spending yes, some yeah, time, absolutely. and then he can pull things and he can show you. Like I said, the budget we're going to give you this next fiscal year is going to be very similar to the budget you got this fiscal year, you know, there's going to be some projects that are moving, you know, out that have been completed. There's new projects coming in, but our core funds are all pretty much the same. 
you know, the revenues come from the same place, the expenditures go to the same place. Um, it's just not an overly complicated um, city budget, honestly. I mean, what's complicated is fund accounting is complicated. Fund accounting is not easy. Um, it's a whole different type of accounting, you know, principles that are applied to fund accounting than just your average, you know, your household budget or, you know, something that you would run through QuickBooks. So that is that is where it becomes a little bit more um, of a complicated feature. So it, he would be just have more time to be able to answer your questions, I think. All right. Um, any further discussion on this item? And we'll proceed as uh, as we've discussed. Uh, we are on item 12, Council Correspondence, League of California Cities Legislature. And in our packets were some of the upcoming bills to consider taking action on. Um, there was many uh, concerning organized retail theft, addressing um, the property loss, damage, addressing cargo theft, eliminating the sunset date for the crimes, that kind of thing. And then there was some labor relations um, issues, some sales tax, housing, and um, is there anything you wanted to add before I get into this was the last correspondence looks like it was from Mr. Wickheiser who addressed us earlier concerning Lemonade Day um, and he's part of the Dream Maker Project of the Ink People and so he was promoting that idea which we've passed as a proclamation. So was there anything you were um, particularly interested in us knowing about as far as legislation coming up? Yeah, I think there's going to be some interesting um, stuff as we get closer to the election cycle. Um, but right now, <clears throat> these are some of the priority um, that the league is working on. And I anticipate that we'll be bringing back um, some letters um, and some authorizations to take positions on a few items. Mm -hmm. um, so I know there's um, some specific ones that Elizabeth is aware of uh, from her meetings with the league um, that are going to be real important for all cities to to uh, take positions on. Um, but we just haven't, I think they're going to, that will start ramping up as we get closer to November. So. Yes, and our next League of Cities meeting is in Rio Dell on May 3rd, Friday, and I'm planning to go to that. I'll be there. It's 1 to 5. I have to leave early, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I can make it for the whole time. Um, but anyway, that, um, that'll that be more information for us to garnish on this. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion on item 12, simply our correspondence, we are now on 13, which is our consent agenda. And we have only one item, the warrants and disbursements. Did anyone want that pulled? No. For discussion? Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to pass the warrants and expenses. So moved. I'll second. Motion made by Elizabeth McKay, seconded by Elise Stefani to approve our consent agenda. Any further discussion from council? Anything from public? Back to council for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 So you're missing one. We're missing her and you're missing somebody one. left. At we, um, we have three. So All right. Well, it's still a quorum. Three to two. So <laughs> <laughs> two absences. The skin of our teeth. <laughs> Dropping my pies. <laughs> okay. We are now on item 13 reports of council and staff. Since Christopher's not here at the moment, I'll just go with um, you, Elise. Did you okay. attend some meeting? I did. I attended the uh, Redwood Coast Energy Authority meeting yesterday. We had a special meeting because we wouldn't have a quorum for our regular meeting. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, the the e bike voucher program is is often running and doing really well, and that's kind of an exciting um, item. Also, um, we um, voted yesterday to go forward with a second phase of the. Um, Foster Clean Power um, Purchase Agreement. So there's um, there's a facility being built at the Foster Avenue, um, the old uh, mill site in Arcata, oh. and it's going to have um, 
seven megawatts of solar power and battery storage. And so um, Redwood Coast Energy Authority is buying all of their power. So that's kind of exciting. That's going to be, it's, it's a 20 year, um, it's a 20 year uh, purchasing agreement. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of exciting. Who's creating the power? It's a company called, um, well, they're calling it Foster Clean Power. And I'm honestly, that's not, the, I don't know that that's the, um, that's the facility name and the, um, it's on Foster. It's on Foster. Yeah. Wow. Over by, um, J where Jane's road just, it's just west of where Jane's road comes into Foster. I remember that property very well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, it's Renewable America. That's who it is. Renewable America. Um, so anyway, that's kind of exciting. We're going to have some more locally generated power. And also RCA um, just uh, got an award for a $3 million grant to um, to uh, create um, solar generation and battery um, storage uh, facilities for 16 different um, entities uh, and fire departments. Um, and this this program is about um, creating resiliency in during times of um, power outages and nat natural disasters, times where where um, the grid might be uh, disrupted. So it's an energy resilience and fire services um, uh, program. So uh, RCEA is going to be doing all the design permitting and um, facilitating the construction of all these units, and then they will be handed over to the um, to the sixteen entities. And I'm just going to really quickly read those entities. Um, it's kind of exciting because Blue Lake Volunteer Fire Department is one of them. Uh, the Yurok mm -hmm. Tribe Fire Department, Hoopa Tribe Volunteer Fire Department, Karuk Department of Natural Resources, Telegraph Ridge Volunteer Fire Department, Honeydew Volunteer Fire Department, Fruitland Ridge Volunteer Fire Department, Oric Volunteer Fire Department, Orleans, Petrolia, Salmon Creek, uh, Bridgeville, Bryceland, Whitethorn, Willow Creek, and West Haven. So um, all those folks are going to be benefiting from this grant. And um, and kind of exciting. Yeah, that's very exciting. So, there you go. That's okay. all I got. Yeah, and that was the only meeting you went to? It is. Chris went to um, my other meeting, which was the um, yes, I have Parks and Rec, because I wasn't well at the time. Oh. Would you like to report on that, Christopher? Yes. Okay, Parks and Rec, Christopher. We, there's a bunch of new people there. Uh, we have Jan Henry. Um, yeah. And she's the new chairperson. Uh, who everybody knows her. That well, not everybody. I guess she worked for I Parks do. and Rec years ago. She's great. Um, he was the Parks and Rec director. Yeah. And um, then we have Chris. I don't. I can't remember his last name, but he's uh on our board and he was a parks and rec fire? director what fire yes he was here earlier yeah. yeah oh he was a parks and rec director in new mexico and now he's on the commission he's on the board yeah oh good yeah um they mentioned something about the uh beer league wanting to play um softball on annie mary day again like they used to <gasps> really but they oh. want to do it on Sunday, but that's where they all they put the vendors. That's there. where all our vendors they're are. They're talking now. about that. Mm, they want okay. to do it on Saturday, Sunday, but they're trying to get them to do it on Saturday. Um, get out and play day. They're trying to set up something here in town um, on Saturday, July 20th um, to do a get out and play day, kind of promote it for local kids and people. Um, <laughs> And people. And regular people. The older people. <laughs> well, not, just, not just older people. All the peoples. Um, All humans. Yeah, because they were talking about doing like an elderly uh, pickleball tournament. And Don't, are you looking at me? I was looking at all of you. Oh, well, God. Never mind. <laughs> That's fun. Oh. I represent it. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah, pickleball is big, and not just with the elderly. No, me, me and the wife play it all the time. It's great. There you go. Yeah, it's a fun game. Um, but yeah, any suggestions are we're more than welcome for those events. Okay, yeah. thank you for attending that meeting.
Okay. Um, so on the 11th, I attended the Humboldt Waste Management Authority uh, meeting, and most of it was taken up with the fiscal year 24-25 budget, which we went through, and we will have our final budget in May. That was just the draft. Um, and we discussed SB 1383, which is all about processing organics, and we have an extension of up to a year on our grant because we don't actually have that ready yet. Um, and then we moved on to standing board member reports. And I always like to report on our yard waste day in Blue Lake. And then the update from our executive director was that Fortuna is still wanting to join our, um, our organization as a board member. Um, and the director met with the Fortuna city manager last month. They would add about 6,000 tons over the year to the total. Um, and then in January, there'll be a zero waste. In January, there was a zero waste Humboldt who gave a presentation. So that was HWMA on Thursday, the 11th. And then on Thursday, the, what was that? January? I know, January 11th, zero waste Humboldt gave a presentation. I guess it was somebody, somebody told about that. The report. Um, Okay, then the next meeting I went to was Humboldt County Association of Governments, and we discussed Bike Month as well and proclaimed May as Bike Month, and there's a lot of activities going on in Eureka concerning that as well. And um, we um, approved our overall work program for 23-24 with a budget amendment that we had to make for the last year, and then we approved the overall work program for the coming year, 24-25. And then we also talked about the low carbon transit operations program, um, which we um, have funds for. Um, and what else did we have that day? Um, we're having um, Ride Humboldt, um, Humboldt Transit Authority report from Alex Dillman on Ride Humboldt, which is a uh, day and I think it's the same weekend as the city. Yeah, it is. It's May 3rd and 4th um, where they're riding around on our transit system and getting photos of people. And because they're starting this new program called Ride Humboldt, it's a whole um, idea to get people to ride the bus more off it. Um, a group called Studio Six is coming out to film people on that. So that's about all I have with Humboldt County Association of Governments. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Go ahead. Well, Elizabeth. Um, economic development was canceled and arts and heritage was canceled. Oh. But I did attend the um, 31st League of Women Voters luncheon. Yeah, I saw your picture. You saw nice. my picture? Your picture. Oh. Uh, on Facebook. Oh. Um, with Jennifer. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys are matched. We matched. Yeah. We're like, both red and like, black. Are you kidding? <laughs> um, yeah, because I was like, gosh, I was feeling like I was dressed for winter. Um, so, yeah, it was really it was really well attended. It's an amazing event. And um, I think most of the city of Arcata was there. There were a lot of people there. And I would highly recommend that people go next year to it. Um so yeah, there were some great speakers, uh, Lori Dangler and then Jennifer Savage, um, and they gave out some awards to the um, the zoo, the people who had the um, the zoo. They've been working on it for I think twenty years. Um, that raised all the money for the zoo, and they just dissolved their thing because they have yeah, done the foundation. Yes, they have finished what they set out to do. Mm -hmm. so um so they're, yeah, they're so they're done he's retiring yeah. yeah so that was really neat and uh yeah it was a great event really a lot of interesting people to to talk with there so i highly recommend it and um yeah that's it so i just want to announce that this um saturday from two to seven is the blue lake block party in downtown blue lake um i know the museum is having uh plants out and uh that kind of thing. It's also the same morning of the rhododendron parade. 
Um, and then also to announce, it looks like on May 18th, Saturday, we're going to have our the museum opening from 1 to 4 starting that day and probably going through October. You said this Saturday for the block party? Yeah, the 27th. I haven't seen anything about that. It's been it's been advertised on the on Facebook on the community news site. It's mostly going to be in front of the lager bar, but there's going to be that's, that's where the flyer flyer party. That's yeah, flyer party. Okay. So it's really May Day. It's well, when celebrating you did party. May Day. Yeah, when you said the museum was going to do their thing, I thought, oh, that's something different. Yeah, well, we are going to have another. I know what you're thinking of our plant sale. That's not going to yeah. happen until June, but okay, this is we are going to have plants that day because one of our members bought. This, uh, propagates jade plants like crazy so she has a bunch of if you're interested in jade plants okay um moving on then to city manager report we have mandy's report in our packets um the sheriff contract negotiations uh they've been just decreased thanks to our ad hoc committee meeting by 45,000 we have measure z um Decisions to still find out about. We asked for thirty-five thousand. They've requested that it go down to thirty thousand. We'll see how we do on that. When is the meeting again? I believe it's May seventh. Yeah, that's what I have. May May seventh. Measure Z Board of Supervisors. And as soon as you can find out a little more, how closely the time would be, so that we could be there for that. I would like to be there. And then concerning park and rec, the state park per capita grant, um, uh, the majority of the work has been done of this $177,000 grant, but we do have a new roof coming on to Prash Hall. Can I ask you a question about that grant? I noticed that, um, so this grant's been ongoing for like two or three years. So, um, and I noticed that um, other municipalities got the same grant and the same amount of money. So I'm wondering how often, I mean, is this a grant that comes along every so often or how does that work? No, this was um, <clears throat> like a park set aside that came through the state. Um, we've never seen this funding before. Um, originally, we were supposed to get 200000 You weren't supposed to, every city was supposed to get an allocation. Um, and based upon population, um, it gets prorated, um, but the minimum amount was supposed to be 200. And so we budgeted for the 200 originally, and then it came in. It took quite a while to get the money. And then when it did come in, we all got 177, which is great um, because it's it's the type of money that n you never get this type of money. Um, it was to maintain or upgrade or build new facilities. You never get maintenance funds for facilities. And so even though it wasn't traditional maintenance in the sense of like, you know, like paying for someone to go mow the lawn, but it, you know, maintenance for um, impacts for deferred maintenance during COVID. So if you had, you know, up upgrading your sprinkler systems, putting the roof on, all of these. So yeah, it was really a, um, a windfall for the city and it's okay. really so helped us make see it again. In other we words. will not. See, I mean, I would okay. love to see it again. <laughs> I've never seen funds I like thought this maybe before. Was so. a program that would come along every I five wish. years or something. And maybe they will. Maybe this, maybe it'll be on the state's radar because I think it's made some huge impacts to cities. Okay. And then moving on, um, Park and Rec Continuing the town square grant, um, I think caught everybody by surprise, but it's going to look great after it's finalized with PG. We'll talk to coming Tina. In. <laughs> yeah, she was really upset. Yeah, she was and very upset. It would have been nice, like a week before, to say, "Hey, this is going to happen." Like maybe even a sign right on it, because not everybody's on Facebook or yeah. whatever. We just got all the signs put up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw yeah. those. That was good. Um, and then the bike park, um, it looks like they're preparing to remove the winterization materials and getting on with working on that. Library improvements, um, pretty much done, except some additional concrete work and replacement of the door. About that 200000 um, So oh, did, the, oh. did the block grant, the block grant is funding this entire thing? 
Yes, it's um, it's not a block grant. It's PI funds. It's program income funds through the community development block grant. But um, these are funds that um, the city has, but hasn't been able to use them for projects. So this was a, basically this is an improvement to county facility to the library and not to a city facility. Um, so, so yes, the grant is paying for all of the improvements and they're all um, part of the accessibility improvements. So the community development block grant program. Mm -hmm. It's program income. It's so it's different. There's, you can it's apply different. for CDBG. CDBG has different levels of funding and this is the okay. program income side. Okay. But then for the, the siding and whatnot, we approved up to $60,000 for that additional repair it was the same it's the same program it was just an additional scope of work um, and we ended up not needing the fifty thousand. Um, we were able to do it within budget um, but we may be going back to see if we can do an amendment um, because we just had a code change so the new cast report came out and they're wanting us to do some additional ADA improvements because the code that we did the original project under has now changed and there's some new requirements. And so um, the, the ADA inspectors are recommending that we make those improvements. So we're working with CDBG um, to see if we can use those funds to make those improvements as well. Okay, that's not attached. Mm -hmm. Back just, like just grab it, grab it, for, grab it from underneath. It's really Carefully. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So is this, is this um, part of the, the CBDG um, fund? Is that the same, that money comes out of that when, like back in the old days when we used to loan money to, Homeowners. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to city infrastructure, the truck route study, design, and construction. It's currently out to bid with a bid date in early May, June start update for that uh, project, which is will affect the Greenwood Avenue um, folks including ADA compliant sidewalks, raised crosswalks, flashing pedestrian crossing, a new pavement, signage and striping. And that was a $1.6 million project. And then of course we had the plan that was just presented to us tonight. Um, FEMA water tanks funding. The city submitted a funding project to the FEMA hazard mitigation program to replace our two Redwood water tanks. We've received uh, phase one funding. And once the portion of the project is complete, the city will be funded through FEMA for the removal and installation of two new water tanks ongoing. Greenwood. Um, I mean, we're in the design permitting and engineering phase right now um, through Cal OES. And then um, once that is complete, then we'll go to construction. So um, I don't know, it's probably two years. I think. I think Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we can go out to bid next spring for a construction next summer for the first thing. It'll be two years. Mm -hmm. and a year to build one and another year. But with all the design that happened this year and permitting. And we just started in on that one finally. It took it's several years to get through FEMA. Yeah. So this is something that'll go out to bid then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Keep us informed on that. That's Good information. Um, and then the Greenwood Avenue water lateral replacement project will be coordinated with the work that will be occurring on Greenwood in June. Is that correct? Tractor brings in slightly. Trying to confirm that date earlier today, starting today. Mm -hmm. um, housing element update. Um, the state has received the final submittal and directed the city to pursue yeah, adoption. Yeah. Staff's completed oh, the final draft. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
The city planner is working on the environmental review and will be presenting the plan to the planning commission and then the city council review and adoption. And then HCD representatives to address implementation of various initiatives. Having a compliant housing element allows the city to participate in a range of programs and funding opportunities. Okay, anything else from the manager? What about the power plant? Um, so the power plant, the um, the court ruled in the city's favor on the um, on our filings, and the sheriff served the eviction notice um, a couple of weeks ago, and we've taken possession of the property as of I believe it was Tuesday, no. Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. Um, so we're, Ryan has us going through a process of inventorying the site. Um, and then there's a process that we'll go through with Blake Power. Um, they have are putting in a request to remove items off the site that's now under our control to control that process. Um, Mike and I did a tour of the site on Friday, did an inventory, took lots of pictures. Um, and I think the recommendation will be to, uh, put the project out to bid, um, for salvage and removal and cleanup. And we've already had several contractors, um, contact us who are interested in the project. Um, so, you know, really the goal is to get in and get the site cleaned. Um, there's a lot, um, the main building is abs is absolutely trashed. Um, mm -hmm. but the site's not that big. Um, it's manageable, and I think, you know, I think we can do a good job at getting um, someone on board to be able to hopefully salvage it out. Hopefully there's enough value in what's there. Um, Ryan's in conversations right now with Blake Power to talk about um, their request to remove items. Um, we need to make a, a differentiation between um, personal effects and um, fixed assets, and so Ryan's going to come out next week and tour the site um, because there's a lot of attorney. Yeah. So he can get a better feel for what's a fixed asset versus um, personal property because so much of the equipment and stuff is affixed to the foundations mm -hmm. and it's all interconnected. So, um, so the attorneys will be giving us a recommendation on that and we'll bring back that, you know, the whole thing to council um, once we kind of have a game plan, um, have a better feel for the legal process and just kind of what the rights of the city are at that point. The have, chips, or is there any idea of what's happening with those? Um, I mean, that'll be the other side that we'll, you know, be working to get rid of. Um, I know Blake Powers expressed interest in removing those as oh, well. Really? So, oh. mm -hmm. okay. um, so we have a process that we have to work through legally to be able to, you know, we can't, it, it's not just like the city's yet. Um, so there's still legal implications and, um, you know, that Blake Power have as part of this. So. so part of the court ruling was that they were allowed to go in to get their whatever they Yeah, that's like part of a normal get. eviction process. Okay. Um, you know, that there's, there's abilities for the city to um, recoup um, assets and um, debt through the sale and forfeiture of certain items. Um, but there's, there, I think the problem is we need a good valuation of what's there um, because there's, there's a lot that doesn't have any value and there's maybe a few things that do have some value. And so the goal will, I would assume, um, would be to leverage the things of value to get rid of the things that don't have value as well. So um, we're, we're not inheriting a gold mine. <laughs> right, right. But on the We're inheriting hand, a lot. <laughs> we're inheriting a lot, but it's not a complete headache. It's I mean, not. And it's t it was time. It was time to get it before something worse happened. Um, there's a lot of vandalism that's taken place. Um, oh. The the main building is just completely destroyed. Really? Um, so it's... We're lucky, I guess, that we have, there's not more issues. So it's good that we got control of it. We um, have changed the locks, um, signage is going up. Um, we've contacted the insurance agents you know, to make sure that we, um, you know, get it on our policy and protect the city. Um, so and all the holes in the fence are fixed. We're, we're starting that process as well. So, so is there um, an opportunity for the 
for the council to tour the site? Yeah, I think after Ryan goes through and makes his determination on kind of where we're at with the process, um, then we can see about getting you guys in. Um, I mean, there's definitely some safety concerns out there, um, some stuff that we want to make sure is um, completely addressed. Um, we were told that um, a lot of the fuels and chemicals and things have been removed, but there are still quite a bit out there that we're not really sure what the status is. So we need to have environmental health come in and make some assessments. So we're trying to kind of limit the exposure. Um, it's there's a lot out there that um, that I'm not really sure what it is, but um, once we get a good handle on it and make sure that it's a safe site, we can definitely make you know get council out there to tour it. So just want to mention that um, Humboldt Sawmill Company um, for power plant is interested in some of the assets on the property. Yeah, we've been contacted by a few um, different companies. Like I said, the problem that we're the problem that you have is you have a lot of um, a lot of salvage, a lot of crash. And so like I said, it's really going to be leveraging the value to um, get rid of the waste as well. So I think putting together well, a comprehensive package for this so we get people bidding on it and we get, you know, reasonable, you know, apples to apples types of evaluations for costs, I think is in the city's best interest. Mm -hmm. the, the general manager of Humboldt Sawmills gave me um, the names of two different salvage operations mm -hmm. that um, they've used in the past. So I yeah. can pass those on to you. Sure, that would be great. All right, thank you for that update. Any other council questions or concerns? Anyone from public? Okay, um, we are now on the financial report. And we have uh, our packet including the financial report for July 1, 2023 to July to, I'm sorry, January 31st, 2024, and um, or March, March, or March 31st. 31st, thank you. And it looks like, um, are we going to need to do a budget amendment at all this year? Um, yeah, we probably will. Okay, yeah. so that'll be coming back next month. Are there any questions or concerns about the financial report? Um. No, I did want to, um, uh, I just noted on on page 12 that we got more money for our supplemental law enforcement services grant than we were expecting by almost, was it 7,000? So that's nice. Anyway. Lots of numbers. Yeah. Good times. Yes. Lots of numbers. Like we're more or less on track. It looks like sewer and water are um, sort of holding steady. Um, we're actually, oh, I could be wrong about this, but um, <laughs> with depreciation, we're actually, um, not in the red, I think. Is that right, Mandy? What's that? Including depreciation in sewer and water, we're actually still in the black. Um, we're trend. We're definitely trending in the right direction, and um, it's it is somewhat mirroring what the rate study had projected. So, uh, you know, we are digging ourselves out of a hole, but um, we're we're definitely trending in a direction that's supporting. O and M, um, which we weren't before. So, what's O and M? Um, operations and maintenance. So this, I think, I think this might be the first time that we're not in the in the red um, on on funds sixty and seventy. But I'd have to go back and notice that for sure. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay. Anyone else on the financial report? All right. Um, we are now on 
I think we should, should talk about future agenda items. I mean, I did notice there wasn't an approval of agenda at the beginning. We did notice that too. I noticed that, uh, you know, about halfway through oh. there. So we need to put that in there. Um, but um, motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. Well, it's too late. All right. Um, but I would like to do the future so agenda the items before the closed session. And I'm not sure if we want to do the closed session because we are not a full council. But that's up to the. Oh, she be had her say. Okay. It's just written up what everybody. Wrote. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's. I don't think it's an issue. I... Okay, then let's do that. But let's. Um, I would suggest that we go through any future agenda <laughs> items <laughs> now. Hanging in there. Yeah, thank you. Sakes, riveting. <laughs> Not everyone. We're still here. Yeah, go home and get on Zoom and get frustrated. <laughs> And I might. Right. So for future agenda items, I have the cat cannabis ordinance, um, the new new camera. Um, can we just forego that being another um, uh, another month down the road and just buy a new camera? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I've gotten dozens of messages from people saying it was just like this last month. Okay. So we're two months in a row with no audible audio and. Um, we just need to replace this piece of equipment. Okay. And Justin, do you have any recommendations? Um, you've done a little research, I know. Do you know of something that might be appropriate? Honestly, um, the system that we have currently, we have enough equipment now. We just need to get the training and we need to work a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We need to take the time before it's, before it's crunch time. So plug everything in, make everything work, and it will work. It's just we don't have the time to figure it out. Right, but, but, but we, sorry. We can split the audio. We can do everything we need to do. Use those microphones through Zoom. It's just we didn't have the, the time to set it up and test it properly yet. Right, but there there appears to be something wrong with this unit. Yes. So we should have a unit that is a standalone unit that but can be used for I think the goal is we're going to transition over to Justin's setup. I think that's a good goal, and I think we are. But I think so that there, there may be times where there's a technical problem with a full setup, and so it would make sense to have a fallback position that is functional, that we know is functional. So this is, a, I don't know, this is just future agenda items. I know. But You're right. We're just I discussing we, whether we should even put this on the future should, agenda. I think you should go into City Hall and talk. I don't know okay. if it's the council. It's not on the agenda. Right. It's late. and Right. Okay. So um, any other future agenda items? The budget will be coming up in May, I'm assuming. <clears throat> and budget amendments. Yeah. We're going to, that's what I think Scott's shooting for um, is to get a draft in May. I mean, our goal is always, we always try and get May, and then it seems like we're right there with two meetings in June to, yeah, it I'm takes a while. I'm going to be while. gone for most of the month of June, oh. just FYI. Okay. 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 So nobody else gets sick. All it right. seems like even if we don't have a final agenda proposal in May, maybe we could okay. be looking at that draft so everybody yeah. can see it. We might have an extra meeting in May if we need to, if you're going to be gone most of June. All right. Um, and we will have our agenda um, meeting, ad hoc meeting, hopefully, for the next meeting. All right. Um, now we are at closed session. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54957, a closed session will be held to conduct an employee performance evaluation for the position of city manager. Um, do we want to have just the council and then, um, yeah, and then bring Mandy in, or are we? Yeah. Have... Then you can go over it because they have to see the final. Oh, okay. So it sounds like we're going to have um, we're going to go into closed session with just the council, and then we'll notify you when we want just Mandy to come back in. But okay. it'll just be and the council. Can we let everybody else in the video equipment go home? Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we need a motion to go into closed session pursuant to government code. Motion made by Elizabeth McKay, seconded by Christopher Edgar to go into closed session. 
session pursuant to government code section 54957. Any further discussion from council? Anything from public? Back to council for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're in closed session.